A few reminders, as stated in the Guide to Financial Operations, or the GFO, Chapter 13, Section 1, Employee Expense Reimbursement Overview, and Chapter 12, Section 7.A, Responding to Voucher and Expense Report Audit Questions, as well as the beginning pages of the OSC Manual, the agency's finance office or other appropriate authority is responsible for determining if each travel scenario is actual, reasonable, necessary, and in the best interests of the state. When questions arise, the traveler and the supervisor should work with the agency's finance office or other appropriate authority to arrive at a determination after considering information in published travel guidance, including agency-specific travel policies, the OSC travel manual, and the GFO. After consulting the guidance, if the agency's finance office or other appropriate authority personnel are unable to arrive at a determination, then they should contact OSC's travel team. We will gladly assist them in reaching an agency-specific solution. We wanted to share some of the common issues we've encountered while auditing expense reports. These are things to keep in mind when creating and reviewing expense reports to help avoid errors that may result in denials. So the first being unreconciled travel card transactions. Travel card transactions should be reconciled within 30 days of the completion of the travel event. There are, they are considered fully reconciled when the related expense report has been approved by OSC. Another are duplicate reimbursements. So the best way to avoid this issue is by submitting your expense reports timely and by checking your expense report history to ensure you're not submitting the same travel expenses more than once. Mileage and fuel charges being claimed for personal vehicle use. So mileage reimbursement rates for the use of a personal vehicle include the cost of fuel. So travelers should not be reimbursed for fuel and mileage for the, for the use of their personal vehicles. Another are missing or incorrect travel dates. Travel dates should accurately reflect the beginning and end dates for each travel event, while the expense date should reflect the date each expense was incurred. Incorrect mileage claimed or incomplete addresses. Mileage claims must be calculated correctly and take into account the lesser of mileage rule. Addresses should be specific enough to identify the exact travel locations. Another are incorrect per diems. So this happens when the chosen per diem expense type does not agree with the method of travel. So for instance, if a traveler stayed with a friend for an overnight trip, but chose method two as their per diem expense type instead of method one, this would be the incorrect per diem expense type. Travelers and reviewers should ensure the chosen per diem expense type is appropriate and in accordance with the OSC travel manual. Another reason a per diem is incorrect is because the wrong per diem rate is used. Travelers and reviewers should ensure per diem rates are based on the location, the lodging location, and do not exceed the amount set by the U.S. General Services Administration. Another is missing or incomplete justifications for exceeding per diems. So travelers should not exceed the log maximum lodging per diem rates. However, in cases where this cannot be avoided, the traveler must have a justification and obtain prior approval. The traveler must also attach the justification and prior approval to their expense report. Another is incorrect expense types selected. Travelers should choose the most appropriate expense types for their travel expenses. For a list of expense types and their definitions, we see Chapter 13, Section 9 in the GFO. Another are inc incorrect or no documentation attached. We also, also frequently see expense reports that do not have the required documentation attached. Examples of documentation that must always accompany an expense report are receipts for all travel card transactions, as well as any claims for reimbursement, and documented prior approvals for certain expenses that do not adhere to the state's travel rules and regulations such as when a traveler exceeds the maximum lodging per diem rates. 
And the last of our audit observations, per diems are not allowed for day trips because their travel times don't coincide. So for day trips, we see travelers claiming meal per diems when their travel times do not meet the requirements in the OSC travel manual. Travelers should not claim a day trip meal per diem unless the travel time begins at least one hour before their normal start time or ends at least two hours after their normal end time. So for some reminders and best practices, know the state's travel rules and regulations. We recommend reading the OSC travel manual in chapter 13 in the GFO to become familiar with the state's travel rules and regulations. Ensure the most economic method of travel is used and charges are in the best interest of the state. These guidelines are fundamental to New York State travel and should be followed by all agencies. Obtain and include prior approvals if required. An example would be when a traveler exceeds the maximum lodging per diem rate, but may also include other travel scenarios where the state's travel rules and regulations cannot be followed. Periodically review employees' official stations to avoid unintended tax consequences. Submit expense reports and reconcile travel card charges within 30 days. This is important for effectively monitoring travel card use and for reducing the potential for complications if an employee were to leave state service. And to include some of our reminders and best practices, travelers and reminders should ensure the following, that mandatory fields are correct, that expense line dates fall within the travel event start and end dates as applicable, day meal and extra meal per diems must follow the eligibility requirements based on the travel times and work schedule of the traveler, we strongly encourage travelers to enter their normal working hours and expense reports when they are entitled to day meal or extra meal per diems. Prior approvals are documented and attached. A justification should also be included for any travel scenarios requiring prior approval. All receipts are attached to the expense report in SFS. If a traveler lost the receipt, the no receipt button in SFS must be checked and an explanation provided in the comments. For online agencies, all travel card charges must be brought into the appropriate expense report from the employee's wallet and listed as a travel card charge. Certain travel card charges should offset reimbursements. For example, if a traveler uses their travel card to purchase fuel and is also claiming mileage, the fuel charge must be assigned as a non-reimbursable expense and must offset any reimbursements owed to the traveler. Travel card charges found to be inappropriate must be reimbursed by the employee. This can also be done by offsetting any reimbursement amounts they are owed. We ask that you do not resubmit an expense report that has been denied until all the issues identified have been addressed and corrected. Finally, we created um, a list of valuable resources for questions related to travel expense. In the bottom link for the travel advisory, you will also find COVID related travel updates that are currently in effect, such as Travel Advisory 15. Um, so please check out the presentation PDF on the OSC website under training resources for state employees and, you know, save these resources for your reference for future use. Um, we, we hope we found that this presentation was informative and we thank you for your time. And any other questions that may arise, uh, we ask that you just go through your agency's finance office and supervisor to discuss those questions first uh, before reaching out to our travel mailbox, which is travel at osc.ny.gov and have a great day.